Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And I'm Ross. Yeah! <laughs> oh, no! A wild Ross appeared. He looks super powerful. Oh, my goodness. See, Stephen Ross, how did you get in here? I just busted down the door. <laughs> oh, well, that works out great. And now we need new doors to our respective recording areas. This is why we can't have nice things. Or doors. <laughs> or doors. We can't have nice doors. Ross, it has been uh, a while since you have been on the show. Like three years. Like three years, yeah. Yeah. For anyone who's keeping track and has listened to our show since the beginning, yes. well, this is about as beginning as you get. Yes, it, it has been quite a while since we talked about Crush the Rebellion, which some people may remember uh, from, from a while ago. Uh, but, uh, so you've been keeping busy, though, from what I hear. Yeah, yeah, so it, it's been a real long time. It's been three years. We were already kind of uh, chatting about how the, the world of 2016 is very different than the world of 2019. Mm. Uh, but I've been keeping busy in between. I have a lot of different uh, RPG and RPG-related tabletop kind of product, projects that are going on. And the newest and greatest that we're, work, that we're doing now is coming out uh, Tuesday, May 7th. It is called Avarice, a silly game about dwarves in a fortress. When you told me about uh, dwarves and that it was a game all, all about dwarves. Uh, so Firstly, much... Nathan wanted to throw the dwarves, for the record. Yes. For the record, in my game, that I'm, the, my D&D game that I'm currently playing, in the, last, in, in the last session, I did get to throw my halfling companion character. He asked me to toss him, and I was like, done. So long as it's consensual, who am I to judge? Well, when they give you the Gimli meme, and it's just the, the toss me meme, when they're trying to explain what they yeah. want you to do, yeah. it's like, okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll sacrifice my action so I can chuck you 30 feet in front of me. <laughs> Y'all have enough space. Why dwarves, Ross? Why dwarves? Well, Avarice really started uh, from a, just like a deep well of passion of mine for the video game Dwarf Fortress. Um, and this is kind of like an infamous game in the, in the, in the gaming community. Uh, it's been out in alpha state for, I think, 13 years now, somewhere in that range. More has than it 10. really been uh, that long? It really has. Is it really has been I... in alpha. I last played uh, it, it must have been five or six years ago when I played it. And I didn't play long because yeah. it's... Right, it's definitely got one of those learning curves that are just like either you get yes. it and you like it, yeah. or you just go, "I can't." <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's kind of infamous for its really steep learning curve, and it's even steeper, just awful UI experience. Like even the the creators are like, "Oh yeah, our UI is absolutely terrible," <laughs> uh, and so it, it's a bear to really like get into. But the reason why it's so interesting, it, the premise of this of that video game that I love is. What if the developers of a video game spent all these years and didn't give anything towards graphics or anything like that and put everything into gameplay and just max that out? Like, what kind of crazy game would come out of that? And mm. what ends up happening is you have all of these, like, random but also interconnected, procedurally gen generated elements that come together in really, really complex and nuanced ways. And the best part of it is the stories that come out of it. So if you go onto a search and just search for Dwarf Fortress stories, they are the most fascinating things. And these all things all really happen in this video game. Um, and it's all just like, it just happens as you play. It's just uh, combined as uh, in the different elements that come together. And they're just, they're just bonkers off the wall kind of stuff. Mm. So I, and I love that. Um, but to do that in the video game, you got to sink like, I don't know, eight to 20 hours into the game to get like a real fortress with a real history going on. So I said, okay, I got this really steep learning curve. Uh, I got this terrible UI. I got this huge amount of time commitment that you have to put it in. But I, I have so much love for this, and I want to share it with the world. How do I do that? And my skill set is at least a little bit of these tabletop designs. So I said, you know what? It's going to take me a while to figure this out, but I'm going to make a tabletop RPG inspired by this video game so that I can create those crazy dwarf stories. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, Dwarf Fortress is something that I was not particularly familiar with. 
yeah, in like a month, maybe they finally came to an agreement that it's going to come out on Steam. And the reason was, was because the, the creators, which are just two brothers, they're in their 40s now, I think. And they're like, hey, we have hospital bills we need to pay and healthcare. <laughs> uh, we need to actually make money off of this now. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. before they, the game, the game has always been free. Mm-hmm. Free, to, free to download and all that um, completely. And then they've just been surviving off of the generosity of donations. That's actually going to be the business model that Avarice takes is it's always going to be pay what you want. And then uh, we're going to take that money and then uh, it gets split evenly between I'm working on it as the creator. I have an editor and layout. So we're taking a portion between us. Uh, there's an artist, Krug Smash, who does a lot of YouTube videos about Dwarf Fortress. So he's been working with us to do all the artwork. He takes a portion, and then the creators of Dwarf Fortress get the third portion. Oh, nice. so here, here's a really quick question for you: Is your art inspired by Dwarf Fortress, or is it a little oh, bit 100%. better? Oh, one hundred percent. Krug Smash, his YouTube channel. He uh, is a full time YouTuber now, and he like plays Dwarf Fortress, and he has a similar kind of mindset where he said, "Oh, there's so many like hurdles to get like normal people into this." <laughs> <laughs> so what he does is he plays it, plays a game like a let's play edits it a huge amount and then draws out by hand uh he probably draws out like uh half a dozen different uh scenes from the game that he's playing to kind of like illustrate to people what is actually happening in the game so you'll see so he just draws these just like all these different like weird forgotten beasts that have propped up in the cave and so the video game gives you like uh, you know, would give you like a description in text that you'd ha- it's like buried within a couple menus. So he'll bring that up and actually draw out what this thing looks like. So we worked with him to kind of get his his art together and all these just like like kind of cartoony, uh, but really nice looking pictures of dwarves in their fortress doing dwarfy things. Ooh. But it's not ASCII, right? Because I know Dwarf Correct. Fortress, the last I played, Correct. was 100% <laughs> graphics were ASCII. Basic Dwarf Fortress is nothing but ASCII. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, are you familiar with what ASCII is? Yeah, it's uh, when you make little smiley faces, and then they're <laughs> drooling with, the with like, the little uh, uh, space bar thing. I mean, yeah. th- that's an emoticon. If I do, like, three rows of it, though, it becomes art. Yeah, right. So, like, in the video game, you'll just see, like, an... you'll just see, like, a horde of E's charging at your fortress, and those are, like, a bunch of elves. <laughs> you just gotta have to, like there's a little disconnect oh oh okay i get it hi my name is e i'm an elf ascii images that are generated are using nothing but symbols from uh your computer or your right. keyboard yeah yep. um symbols that a computer can like text symbols so the entire game everything that is graphically in this game is generated with symbols right they're not like it's not like real pieces of art that have been made necessarily Although yeah. you can obviously use ASCII to make art, but like I think what trees are the um the carrots. A carrot would be a trap, you know. It's it's been a while. I mean, I use a, I use a, a a third party thing that puts graphics on it. I like I'm looking at something where they have the Dwarf Fortress on Steam, and it does look like they have some graphics on there. Yeah. So when when it's going to Steam, there's a another a, another gaming company. Uh, they're like Ox something or other. And they're they're putting together a, a, a user interface and graphics package for specifically for Steam, so that like again, it's a little bit more accessible. Yeah, because when I look at it this way, I'm like, oh, okay, I I can see what things are, <laughs> and then I look at the yeah the ASCII uh, layout, and I'm like, oh god, this is intimidating. There's a a, a, a recurring meme in the Dwarf Fortress Fortress community about that scene in the first Matrix. Where the guy's like, I don't even see the code anymore. <laughs> yeah. I just see blonde, redhead. You know, like that's yeah. that's a thing. You just like you you eventually like your brain just trains to it. Yeah, you see like you, you see anyway. the symbols just like <laughs> falling down in front of your face. Yeah. Why yeah. why was Dwarf Fortress so inspiring for you? Because of its depth, it's really just those stories that came out of it, you know, and and being able to do that. Um, I also just like I kind of like dwarves in general, just as like an RPG player like mm. beards and being strong and, and like stocky um avarice has a it's in no way required at all but there is a uh there are optional drinking rules that go along with it so it is also a drinking game and that kind of like goes with the whole like dwarf aesthetic and dwarf fortress and like they're like in dwarf fortress like dwarves in the video game and in avarice will drink water if they need to but they're not really happy about it they prefer to just drink booze all the time. That seems like also a human thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it depends on the humans, but, you know. 
We're, we're not here to yeah. judge. Yeah. Avarice uh, and Dwarf Fortress are both games that chronicle the lives and accomplishments of stumpy alcoholics as they struggle to avo- avoid sobriety. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I feel yeah, like yeah. that should be your uh, your tagline on your uh, on your book cover. <laughs> yeah. Do the brothers over at uh, Dwarf Fortress know that you made Avarice? Yeah, I contacted uh, Tarn, uh, who's like the head uh, developer there, or uh, AKA the Toady one. And uh, I got in touch with him in early, early February. And I said, hey, you know, I've been noodling around with this game uh, just for like my home games and stuff like that. I think I actually want to put this public I'm totally open to any kind of like business sharing or, or anything like that. It is inspired by Dwarf Fortress, like really hardcore. There's a lot of references that like people in the community will get. Um, and he was like, yeah, man, do it. Do whatever you want. Don't use the words Dwarf Fortress on your on your product. That's pretty much the, that's pretty much the only requirement he had. Oh, nice. Excellent. Right, so that people don't assume it's like affiliated with necessarily. Right. Yeah. So that people don't get confused. Right. Right, right. Oh, that's good though. It's always nice when uh, you know, the people who inspired you are like, "Yeah, no, go, go ahead." Yeah, go ahead. yeah. Super supportive, super supportive. Yeah. And same thing when I reached out to um, this YouTuber Krug Smash for all the artwork, where he was just like very open about and doing these kind of things. He made a couple custom pieces specifically for this, and it was great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, yeah, so I've learned a whole bunch of stuff about Dwarf Fortress because that's a that's a thing I didn't really know about. Uh, I guess that that's just not my uh, my realm of gameplay. So so uh, I guess the next time we make Nathan do a let's play, I got to do Dwarf Fortress. We're gonna see if we can make yeah. you do Dwarf Fortress on well, stream and watch you rage worse well, than you do when you play golf with your friends. Or the the dating <laughs> sims that you keep insisting I play. Those were fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I am not <laughs> Claren, you are my Waterloo. Tell me a little bit about how Avarice plays. So Avarice is a, a game master and between three and five players. Uh, That's kind of like the best uh, scenario that you want to have. And each player represents an entire clan of dwarves. Mm. Uh, They all have these little uh, character sheets that are like half size. Uh, It's a little bit powered by the apocalypse style where you have a dice, you have skills, and then you you use that to collect a dice pool and you roll a bunch of dice and take, uh, and and then you have a range of success and failure and then mixed success with failure uh, according to what you roll. But the main thrust of the game is you have a sheet of paper uh, that is kind of like a section or cutaway view. So you're kind of looking at like almost like a dwarf anthill, mm. you know, like, or a, a ant farm, excuse me, an ant farm kind of setup. And yeah. then a lot of the game is, you know, you're, you talk about what your clans do in the fortress and surrounding environment to help them out, to get rid of some of their uh, like bad, stressful thoughts. And then you roll some dice to see what happens. And then you draw out the results onto the paper and then you pass that paper around. So there's a lot of like communal, like building of the story together. Everyone takes a different turn and does different things. Uh, Every so often the game master will pull out a random event card, which adds another element of like chaos to the mix. And that all comes together into a shared story. Uh, With a lot of the dice rolls, you pull from a Jenga tower and uh, that represents the community of dwarves, the entire community's combined levels of like stress and happiness and things like that. Because as you know, dwarves get angry. And when they eventually get to, they eventually get to a certain breaking point where they just go into a tantruming rage. Uh, and then they start breaking things. They start smashing everything. Something that dwarves don't like is when people smash their stuff. So then that angers the next clan. And mm-hmm. this becomes a tantrum spiral. And then at some point, the tower collapses. And then the game's over. And you draw out how the fortress is turned into a complete and utter ruin. So, <laughs> so every it's got game elements of fortress... dread. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's an element of dread to it. Yeah, there definitely. Um, every game of Dwarf Fortress ends, and it always ends with the dwarves losing. The dwarves are always too greedy. <laughs> that, that, hence the name of the of the game, right? Avarice. They're they're always going after. Mm-hmm. They're always digging too deep. They're always unleashing demons from the magma sea below. They're, they're always just like getting themselves into trouble. So the idea of dwarven hubris is a big one. And the best boss battle of Dark Siders three. Someone will <laughs> get that. Anyway, so the dwarves are always too greedy, and they are always bound to fail. So I kind of go in knowing that. 
Yes, and that's a big part of the game is just going into it and saying losing is fun. You're going to lose. You're going to wreck this fortress. And so it's it's a hard uh, hill to get people over sometimes mentally mm. in that they are going into a game and they're trying to think, okay, how do I strategize best to win? And you can strategize best to extend the amount of gameplay that you have. Mm. Definitely. Um, there's better and worse things to do. But it's best to play this game going into it with the attitude of, this is this is what's going to happen, and it's going to be a fun time with your friends. And at the end of it, you're going to have this picture of this fortress that you've created together with some artifacts floating around too that you've created together. Mm. And it's going to be this beautiful event, and you should just sit back and relax and enjoy it. Perfect. I can't wait to to fail, but failing is fun. So I feel yeah. good. Uh, when it comes to the basic mechanics, uh, so so I have my dice tower. You mean uh, the Jenga tower? I have Jenga I, tower. Or a di- yeah, sorry, I'm get I'm confusing too. Oh, a dice tower would be something. So okay, I have I have that, my, that's a different thing, Nathan. I have my tower of bricks, and yeah. and uh and I have dice too. Yeah, it uses mostly D12s uh, with some okay. D100s for randomly generated things. Mm-hmm. Uh, the D12s are used mostly because they're the most dwarf-like of all dice. How are they dwarf-like <laughs> dice? They're so, they're so stout! I'm surprised you didn't go like a, a, a D300 or something. <laughs> <laughs> that would have way too much swing. I will say, the, the D12 is definitely a stocky dice. It, it yeah. is. I have. Do I have one right here? I have to look at it now. Um. Yeah. I was kind of wondering, like, if you were choosing it for a specific reason, like when you got around to, you know, that it had the kind of swing that you wanted for it, or if it was just because uh, it looks cool. It looks like. Oh, a... it's definitely just an aesthetic. Yeah. It's an aesthetic thing. Yeah. yeah. It. It it's does. It's nice to have it. So. Yeah, the uh, so it's it's this is like uh, the main mechanic is blades in the dark style, which is where you grab a dice pool. Some people can help. There's other things that do it, and you roll a bunch of dice and just take the highest value. So I kind of liked having that. I could have the highest value only come up on one out of twelve. Like it doesn't come up very often. Mm-hmm. Uh, but primarily, the D12 is just like I don't know. That just struck me. That sh- that that spoke to my soul as a dwarven thing. Yeah, because as I look at my D12, I think to myself, you know, this feels like a, a D6 that had a big lunch. Yeah, there you go. It kind of has that look to it. So now I get it. Okay, interesting. And then the D100 you use for super swingy things for random chance? So it's for randomly generated uh, elements. So for example, um, there's, a, there's a few times this comes up. Uh, one of the events that can get pulled up from a random deck is that a uh, a were creature has come into the into the into the countryside and is rampaging and threatening your fortress and putting it under siege? Mm. Uh, but the were creature it could be a werewolf, or uh, but we have a appendix of one hundred creature types. So you roll randomly and maybe you'll end up with like a were giraffe. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, every every clan, so every character sheet uh, gets a. D100 random clan name, a random mineral type that they are most fond of and that shows up onto the onto the map, a random gem type that they dream about, a random creature that they think is the best kind of creature and you have to tell us like why the clan thinks it's the best. Like for example, you could be like, "Oh, my you could end up with my clan really likes leopards. We like them for their spots." Uh, mm-hmm. and and then a random um Every clan has their own god that they worship, and they, you generate a random divine sphere of influence. Uh, all mm. these are D100 tables. And this is, these are kind of like little, little seeds of creativity and inspiration that are generated there to try to uh, you know, just inspire people and give them a little push. Sometimes it comes up. Sometimes it's completely forgotten and ignored, and it really doesn't matter. So one game that I ran, for example, a clan's favorite uh, animal or creature type was an eagle and they liked them for their soaring wings and so every so when they started drawing out buildings and structures onto the map they got inspired by that and they started you know just sketching in like shapes of wings and eagles and stuff like that flying around and it was like really cool how that kind of come came together mm-hmm. and then other times you know people really gravitate towards their minerals so they're like oh i got i ended up with um uh, nickel which is you know a type of metal and so they, they they had in the game their clan mined out the the nickel and started plating uh, the statues with it to uh, make the because the dwarves 
at a random event that they wanted, you know, more beautiful artwork within their fortress. So they were going to engrave them all, all the statues with nickel plating and shine it up and things like that. So hmm. It's pretty cool. Well, I'm still kind of uh, stuck on where giraffe, to be honest with you. I'm still trying to wrap <laughs> my head around this. Alex, you ever encounter a were giraffe? I can't say that I have. In real life, I mean, not in the game. I can't say that I have. <laughs> and But you will not also deny it. I will also not deny it. Okay, good. <laughs> um, I'm not sure who's listening, so we're going to leave it at that. Yeah, exactly. We don't We don't want the giraffe mafia coming after you. Um, so, uh, when I'm building a character, because I, I have, uh, I have my, like, my character sheet, my, my reference sheet in front of me, uh, looking at, yeah. at it for Avarice, um, how do I actually build my, my very fail-prone dwarf in this game? So, uh, going through the character sheet, uh, and the character sheet is pretty brief, uh, it's one side of one letter size of paper, the other, in the, uh, in the product, the other half of it is just like a reference sheet. So typically people just fold it in half and can kind of like flip back and forth. Mm. Uh, so the character, the character sheets all consist of those uh, one, two, five randomly generated uh, just descriptors, the clan name, mineral gem, creature, and divine sphere. Sure. And then uh, next to that, there are 13 skills. The random element is that you're rolling D12s to kind of assign points to them. And the 13th skill, alchemist, is kind of like a little bit of a hidden skill that you have to, you have to, it can only unlock through play because that tr- literally transmutes one material to another and is incredibly powerful in the game. Mm. Uh, below that is a little chart for sh- strange mood. So if there's enough failures within the fortress, a clan goes into a strange mood and crafts together a wondrous artifact from disparate ma- materials throughout the, uh, the fortress. Usually we grab like an index card and it's another communal drawing exercise where people pass around they start with like a real basic sketch and kind of pass it around and embellish it add spikes and carbachons and whatnot to uh to make this like a really cool looking dwarfen item Mm. next to that is every clan gets a specialty such as for example a high priest or an expedition leader and then lastly this is where the game master comes in the game master names the fortress and decides what the purpose of the fortresses. So all these fortresses are created by expeditions of dwarven clans sent out from the mountain homes by the kings and queens of the dwarves uh, for a reason. For example, maybe they need to set up a new monarch's palace. Uh, and if that's so, then they get they start with certain event cards uh, that, that tie into it. Uh, or uh, maybe it's a military outpost, which starts out with uh, the war event cards, and you start out at war with some of the civilizations, uh, the like elves, for example, uh, yeah. that are out there. Okay, so I actually have to have a reason for my fortress to exist. Yes, and the and, and the most common one is frontier settlement, which is we are expanding the dwarven empire and we want to build a new fortress into into the wild, untamed uh, countryside. Go out there and do it. But other ones, okay. you know, you could be like, oh, there's a there. We need a prison colony, or mm-hmm. there's a, a a fortress that has already fallen into into ruin and totally deserted we need you to go back out there and reclaim it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. now uh just out of curiosity if i wanted to make my fortress uh as like a, a wildlife preserve so that i could you know raise and uh a breed like wear giraffes w- yes could, could yes. i could i make that 100 percent. that's actually very easy to do perfect <laughs> it's easy um, to do he says <laughs> So a big part of the game is just like setting up the what's called the embark phase. And that just like sets up the basics of what's happening in the fortress and countryside before your dwarves arrive. There's a, a series of questions that the game master asks the players and they need to answer. One of those questions is, okay, you know, all your dwarves are bringing in these wagons full of basic supplies. What animal holds the wagons? So then you're immediately like, okay, cool. I uh, Wear giraffes. Wear giraffes are Perfect. harvested to pull the wagons. Uh, mm-hmm. Or another question is, uh, do you want to bring uh, a breeding pair of animals in cages? And again, you can just be like, yes, yes, I do. And then you can immediately set up the fortress and the chambers within. So you say, okay, I want to set up, before we even get there, we have a, a zoo set up in the underground. And Perfect. you just, you would start that in- instantly. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Well, now see, I'm all on board. 
now that I can, uh, you know, have have a were giraffe. Preserve. Now that you can have were giraffes. Yeah, now yeah. that I have the were giraffe preserve. Ever since I found out that was a thing earlier in this interview, I've wanted it. So right, right. <laughs> this is this is instant gratification. I love that. So uh, I can see the space where I need to like put my my uh, clan name, mineral gem, creature, divine sphere. You also below that you have uh, specialties. Uh, so what yeah. what are specialties? Every player runs an entire clan of dwarves. But within them, there's a leader, and that leader has an exalted position within the fortress, and that gives you kind of benefits. So there's 10 different specialties, and each one of them covers a certain sphere of influence within the events of the fortress. So for example, one of these special specialties is a bookkeeper. Their sphere of influence is records, histories, ancestors, and recording grudges. Captain of the guard, which is kind of like a sheriff. Champion, which fights sieges by invaders. Chief Medical Dwarf, which is like health and wounds. Mm -hmm. uh, Expedition Leader, which does like long-term what we call mega projects, which are anything that takes multiple turns to be able to complete. The High Priest, the Military Commander, Outpost Liaison, Tavern Keeper, and the Dwarf Therapist. Why would a dwarf need a therapist? All the drinking and angry things they do. Dwarves are very angry. Dwarves are just very angry all the time. But I thought they, uh, and I thought they they're under a lot of stress. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of things going out, right? You know, they're out in this, out trying to establish this fortress. It, the reason why there's not a fortress there already is because this is a terrible place to live. So there's a lot <laughs> of things that, there are a lot of what we call bad thoughts that come to dwarves. Uh, sometimes they get caught in the rain. And let me tell you, dwarves hate nature. So that gives them a bad thought. Or sometimes they run out of booze and then they become sober. And that is a very bad thought. <laughs> Uh, there's a, so there's a lot of things that can generate that. Um, when you okay. get these bad thoughts, you keep track of them with cards, and each bad thought uh, generates additional pulls from the Jenga tower. Okay. So, so here, here's my thought, is mm. a dwarf uh, therapist, I assume is the person with a long beard sitting there twirling his beard and saying, you should have more booze, that'll solve all your problems. That's pretty spot on. That's pretty spot on. <laughs> Perfect. I'd, I'd love to see the little medical pad that he has. It's like two cc's of scotch now. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> see, my, my image that pops in my head is seeing a dwarf sitting down on uh, one of the couches with somebody just like going, okay, tell, tell me what your problems are. And, and his problem is like, my axe is too dull. And so then there, so the, basically that's a New Yorker cartoon for me. And I feel, like, I feel like they should have made that by now. <laughs> it's helpful to have a third. You know, it's funny because you said like chief medical dwarf, and uh, some of the skills that you have to are like a uh, crafts dwarf and fisher dwarf. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> and I do, I do uh, like I mean, the idea that you put dwarf in place of men to really drive home the point right. that you are this character. I did ask you to to define crafts dwarf for me because i was like i'm pretty sure i know what that is but at the same time i probably have no idea what it is yeah nice. crafts dwarf makes like real small objects like handheld things like a uh, mugs uh, amulets rings crowns anything that is like tiny like like handheld that, that's like that which is really useful for trading with other civilizations or just for you know dwarves always they have the avarice right they always have the greed for more items possessions yeah. things and so that helps them craft those uh things that they want to possess now in addition to, to dwarf fortress uh, you were saying that you had a couple other inspirations for avarice can you tell me a little bit about those yeah absolutely so we've already kind of talked a little bit about blades of the in the dark which is very 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 good um and i'm and what inspired me from that is their uh the dice mechanics so it's in that, and as well as Avarice, it's a, it's a dice pool where you collect dice based on your skill level, plus people who help you, plus any kind of outside factors. You roll a whole bunch of them and then pick out the highest one, and then, that, and then you use that to determine what happens in the game. So the highest result, you do your activity, no problem. The middle result, you do it with a penalty in Avarice. Uh, it's take a drink and make a pull. And then mm. the lowest result is that you just fail and something and something bad happens so usually in avarice if you try that and you get a really poor die result you fail and the game master comes in narrates some sort of consequence that comes uh, and affects your dwarf play so like for example uh oh we needed to build this new uh wildlife sanctuary underground or mm -hmm. oh, actually we needed to build a new brewery underground which is very important uh, so we're going to mine it out and, and and dig out this big space and then if it was like a real fail 
the game master might say, oh, okay, you failed and you actually caused the collapse. Draw a huge sinkhole onto the map and then your clan is wounded, which is a bad thought. And then I need a therapist. <laughs> yeah, 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 then you need a therapist. Uh, okay. uh, and then the other game that really uh, uh, brought a lot of inspiration to this is The Skeletons, which is done by Jason Morningstar. Mm -hmm. And it's that's a real tiny indie game where you're, the players play a group of skeletons with, who are guarding a tomb, uh, and you have to draw out the tomb. And that's where a lot of the drawing elements come into play, where everyone's adding a different uh, physical element to this piece, to this map uh, mm -hmm. with pencil and paper. And that kind of comes together and combines into this emergent story. I, I like this idea, too, that you have essentially created almost like a, a randomly generated RPG in this sense that, like, you know, it, you're constantly building different elements with Avarice as time goes on. Yeah. 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 Every, yeah. every game of Avarice is there. That's good. It's good for replayability. Yes. We can't yes. have a wear giraffe in every situation. So that's fine. Sometimes sure. you want a wear elephant. Mm -hmm. That's also good. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you want a weird dwarf or a dire hippopotamus. I wear guess honey badger. That would just be op. You you get a you get a <laughs> weird honey badger. That is oof. when I'm playing this game. So you were saying that like the the end result of this is always that uh, I'm gonna die. Dwar dwarves are gonna die. Yeah, I mean, they're, I mean, I guess they could survive and just be like scattered to the wilds, but the end result is always that the fortress completely collapses, it just falls to ruin. Okay. The, 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 you can't win it. it, it is, you're always going to lose the game. The I'm fortress will always be. <laughs> Does dying or losing make the dwarves have bad thoughts too? <laughs> yeah, they don't like that one. <laughs> the therapist isn't going to help them at that point, probably. Uh, but I was trying to figure out what is going to cause me to fail. Like, what am I coming up against? Is that all pretty much randomly generated too? The the failure event is just when the tower collapses. Oh, so when the tower okay. collapses, that signals the failure, the the dis destruction of the of the fortress. Oh, okay. And that kind of like in game that represents the dwarves just finally cracking under all the pressure, uh, or or perhaps you know that uh, rampaging army of elves have finally broken through your defenses uh it's kind of up to the players how they want to narrate maybe your wear giraffe breeding program got out of hands <laughs> that is a possibility there is an event card randomly that comes up that will perhaps generate that uh, as well as of course the end game uh but yeah so when the tower collapses each player grabs a hold of that map tells everyone one piece of how the fortress collapses in the results and draws it out on the map so the end pictures like the end like maps that you have there are it's just like there's magma everywhere and blood across all the walls and just, just complete destroyed dwarven ruins. Yeah. So this is like a, a panorama that you're going to put out on your wall. Yeah, like, uh, like the, uh, so I ran it for a group of friends and one of them, like at the end of it, they were like, I need to hold on. To, I want to hold on to this. I want to take this home because I want to put this on my fridge. I was going to say, <laughs> you make you make kind of like um, randomly generated like um, communal artwork out of this game. Yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It is yeah. absolutely like that. That is a side hustle you can get going, because I'm sure the, the modern art uh, market would love those pictures. And, the, and then you don't have to have art critics wondering why you've made this piece of art the way it is. You can have a fully detailed story of why it is this way. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That, of course, is kind of avarice in its own right. But see, I think that you succeed in that. <laughs> you, don't, you don't really fail. So uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the way that you're releasing this. So uh, this is this is actually going straight out to um, drive through. Yeah. So on uh, May seventh, it's going to be available digitally for drive through, and then shortly thereafter, we'll have it set up for uh, print on demand. Oh, beautiful. There's a lot of cards that are part of this as, as a component, uh, and of course, just like a physical book. It's I think we ended up with fifty something pages. Mm. There's some depth. There's some meat to it. Yeah, uh, and it would be, you know, that's, but yeah, the cards, you just, uh, the digital version, it'll be print, you know, you just print it out on your printer at home, but we'll announce it. And if you buy the digital, you'll, or, you know, download the digital, you'll, you'll get an automatic, uh, we'll send an email out to let you know that the print on demand is available. And then you can just go back to drive through and say, buy me that. And then, yeah, I kind of want to hold these cards Thanks. in my hand. Yeah. I hope I don't get my aquifer card wet. <laughs> that's what I'm worried about more than anything. <laughs> it's actually going to be made out of water. The cards are actually made out of water. Yeah, it's I'm a water scared. card. Scared. <laughs> no. Let's say I I get my hands on on the avarice. 
Mm -hmm. If if you have a piece of advice for like uh, the players that are actually getting their hands on it, what is the one big piece of advice that you would give them? Build booze now. Okay. <laughs> that's like a brewery and stuff like that. That's not the, a bad. That's the number one thing. So when the game starts, like right after embark, all the dwarves arrive at the site hungry and sober, and you just need to get rid of those things right off the bat, like <laughs> as soon as possible. Right. And that because otherwise it'll it'll be a quick game. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. I mean, that's just that's just good advice in general. You know, just <laughs> build booze now. Yeah. yeah. I can't Life see that goals. Goes. Build booze. <laughs> Squad goals. I need to film those now. Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm liking the the dwarves, and uh, I'm super excited to watch them fail horribly. Yeah, I I get the feeling like when you were developing this, there is a certain uh, level of like almost tongue in cheek humor that you were. Oh you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that the kind of feeling that you were going for from the outset? Yeah, uh, that, that was definitely intentional, and 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 that's that's part of the. I would say the online dwarf fortress community is that kind of like level of uh, giddiness and dwarfiness. Um, there's a lot of like, for example, like throughout the entire th the document, there's like these like references to how terrible elves are and how like they're just like the worst possible creatures that ever lived. <laughs> and it's kind of like a tongue in cheek, like because they're snooty <laughs> and they make tall and they make jokes about our height. And like, yeah. I'm not here for that. All right. <laughs> yeah. No, elves. What do we need elves for? Yeah, you cut down one tree and they lose their minds, all right? Like, they can't even grow beards. <laughs> yeah, boy, it does... It, <laughs> elves and dwarves do feel like they are pretty much polar opposites, you know? In the fantasy world, yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Dwarves I will... smell a, uh, I smell a sequel to Avarice where you play elves. What elves we, in the trees. Yeah, elves in the trees. And you call it. I don't know what you'd call it yet, though. Oh, Elvarus. Tree fort. <laughs> 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 it's like it's like Avarus, but with elves in front of it. Elv Elvarus. So yeah, Elvarus. Elvarus. Yeah. Elvis. Elvis. No, like Elvis. No, you but... would have to name it after another right. one of the deadly sins, and it would probably be pride. <laughs> There you go. Oh, that's a good one. That's yeah, a good one. It would probably... You, you could just go through all of the fantasy, you know, archetypes, and you you could probably just name them, assign them one of the deadly sins that they represent. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that that would work. To a degree, yeah. Orcs would be wrath. I was gonna say, yeah. Who would be sloth? Maybe an actual sloth. Halflings. Oh... Halflings That's... seem to be that way. Yeah, <laughs> halflings do seem like sloth. Just feed me some pie. Oh my god. Who's the one that's hungry all the time? Actually, no. Gnomes would be sloth. Oh. Um, and halflings would be gluttony. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that would be gluttony. Um, oh, and then you have envy. Maybe that humans. would be humans. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say that would be humans. Yeah. Well, hey, congratulations. We now have your next six games. I know. I, I got a full schedule lined up for the rest of the year. Tell me about this, it. This is, this <laughs> is, this is perfect. It's just, it's just this, expansions to Avarice. Yeah. yeah. You just yeah. need you need a new character sheet. You need to re-reference everything. It's doable, especially the elf thing. That's totally doable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can combine the rule sets. Half the group of people are playing dwarves, and the other half are playing elves. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and, and then they um, you use the Jenga tower, and they can affect each other. The elves are trying to build the tower up. Oh, you can have you can have competing uh, fortresses. Oh, yes. Who, who lasts the longest? You just get yeah. bounce back and forth between the. And oh, the first and and, and when you have the collapse. dwarves do something negative to affect the elves, they take a block out of the elves' yeah. tower. Oh, there you go. That's and fun. then the elves can piss off the dwarves, and they take a block out yeah. of the dwarf tower. But then they have to add it to theirs. They have to like take the block out, but then they have to add it to theirs. There you go. Mm. We just figured out your game mechanic right now. That's pretty great. This is, this, this is very interesting. This is a bad <laughs> system. Well, because my initial thought was, okay, elves. If it's if it's the polar opposite, they have to be trying to build a tower. But then their lose condition would be that they have successfully built their tower. That would be like civilization encroaching on their forest. They keep building up the tower, yeah. and the forest is getting decimated because they're building up the tower. <laughs> so every problem that they have, um, and they're hoping it falls over. Their their goal is to make the tower fall. 
Maybe it could be the Dwarf's Tower. They're trying to make the Dwarf Tower fall. They're trying to ruin that fortress. Yeah, trying to ruin that fortress. It's taken up good, valuable field land. Can't have that. It would be a little bit trickier with some of the other ones. I don't really know what you would do when you got to, like, the, uh, the halflings. You would, you would have to try to eat the bricks, and I don't think that that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that being a problem. Orcs, orcs wouldn't be too, too hard because, you know, they're, they're driving, it's all about driving motivations, right? So, like, there would be, you know, they want to go to war and they want to slaughter people and things like that. Yeah. You can make a game off that. Well, you know what you do is for, for that, you repurpose one of those hot shots games, you know, where, where, you would, where you would get the little ball into the little uh, flippy thing and you try oh, to yeah, get it yeah, into yeah, the yeah. basket, yeah. but you'd make, yes. it, you'd make it a catapult and you'd have to try yeah. and continually get it into the thing. And every time you miss, it leads you one point uh, from, from destruction. Every time you succeed, you get angrier. So the idea is to get as angry as is physically possible. A rat, yeah. Yeah, rat. yeah. I figure one of these is going to need to have the little Game of Life spinner repurposed. That's just, like, for random chance. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's some really great uh, fun things that you could do. Oh, oh, I did want to touch in real, real fast. I think you guys would like this, too. Yeah. So the players always pick which skills they want to use, no matter what the situation is. Mm. The Game Master says well that seems sensible go ahead and do it or they or they might say well that seems totally ridiculous i can't stop you from using that skill but i will reduce the effectiveness of it so like for example if there's a siege happening like a, a rampaging horde of orcs and the, and, the, and the dwarfing clan's like well we're fisher dwarves we're really good at fisher dwarfing so mm. we're just gonna like <laughs> use that to like hook the dwarves and do that and be like okay that's stupid but i can't stop you so i'm gonna say this has limited effect what, it, what the player can do is they can say, okay, I eschew all help. No one can help me on this skill check. Mm. And instead, I go into a rage. They need to stand up from the table. It's suggested that they put on a fake beard if possible. And then they go onto a, like, they, like, do this, like, tirade soliloquy about why their clan is angry at the moment at the current situation. And then that helps their skill check. No, oh, beautiful. So, so up, on my, uh, up on my YouTube channel, I've got a couple clips from our uh, playtesting and, and whatnot of players doing the rage, and it's, it's lovely. It's that, lovely. I, I love the role-playing element that you bring into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty great. Toward the end of the night when everyone's had a couple, like, it's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> because you really do feel like you're embodying dwarves at that point. Yeah, Perfect. yes, exactly. exactly. That's great. How long does it actually take me to, to play a game of Avarice? Depends how fast you knock usually, your Jenga tower over, Nathan. Yeah, it, dep <laughs> it depends on a lot of things. So it, the fastest we've done is two hours. The longest we've done is six. And that oh, was ridiculous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but usually three. Usually three. Usually, usually three. three or so. Okay. Okay. So it's a good night out gaming sort of, uh, sort of yeah. thing to play. Yes. It's a very relaxed kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. When can I get this? Tuesday, May 7th. <laughs> yeah. So by the time Perfect. this is out, you should be. I, I have a couple friends I need to pitch this to. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Available on Drive Through RPG. I'm going to uh, right. send it to Anakin and Dylan, and I'm sure they'll send it to uh, Meyerson because they all have played and enjoyed Dwarf Fortress. Perfect. Oh, and yeah. they if anyone are has, also has, RPG yeah. players. Anyone who's into anyone who's into Dwarf Fortress and has played RPGs and likes that, they're just gonna they're gonna go head over heels for this. Yeah, M my friends are going to be screaming, much like the <laughs> yeah. dwarves when they have no booze. Right. Exactly, exactly. Ross, was there anything else that we've missed out on uh, when we're talking about Avarice, something that we didn't know? I guess, I guess the, the one I would just want to touch on real quick, so there's uh, event cards that we have. Uh, so there's like 38 different event cards that can get randomly pulled up. The cards themselves, uh, most of it is just like showing off the artwork that we have, which I'm, which I'm really proud that we were able to get that on there and really do that. So it just shows the artwork and the name of it. And then you have to reference back to the, uh, to the document to see like all the details about what that means. Um, but I, like some of the ones that are, uh, I just want to kind of like highlight a few of them just to give like mm. a, a taste of it. We've talked about the uh, aquifer you mentioned. Mm. Um, there's, you can have cave-ins. Uh, a forgotten beast can crop up, which is this giant, creature that comes out of the caverns and is like cr and is like formed out of a weird material like slime or fire uh there's a lot of different random events that force your dwarves to lust after 
some sort of new, uh, have the greed to lust after some sort of new possession. So like they want new furnishings or they want some, you know, something that they can wear like bracelets and crowns and things like that. Uh, mm. There are ghosts, there are, uh, sometimes you need to build a, the, the dwarves want to study the fine arts and want to have a library. You can have migration waves. Uh, a oh. necromancer can show up with a horde of undead. Uh, there could be a party. There could be a tavern brawl. Your pets could go out of control. Sometimes uh, a vampire dwarf shows up and everyone is terrified. And uh, of course, there are elven spies. So there's a lot of different things that happen. And, and you know, these events you see like a third of them in the game every time you play the game, maybe, maybe less than that. Uh, so every game is so different and just plays out so differently interesting. And all these, these events and all the random things that go onto your clan sheet, like it just, every single game is different and it always creates a unique, I'll take away from. Uh, yeah, and so then you have a few cards that are about like uh, that are labeled as greed and hungry. Yeah. Nature. Yeah, those are all the bad thoughts. The bad <laughs> Nature, thought. Nature's the bad thought. Under siege, sober. Sober has a lot of cards. Sober Terrified. Prepared. Under siege of being sober. I feel like the only way you make it out of this is literally if the entire team is just a bunch of therapists. <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch of brewers, Nathan. Just a bunch of yeah. well, that too. I can see that being really useful. I uh, want something to make me look pretty. How about booze? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the thing that always makes me more attractive. Alcohol. I want something to decorate my house with. How about some more booze? Yeah, dwarves are kind of like a bender from Futurama, right? Yes, like they'll function off of like normal stuff but like if they really well. if you actually want to get them productive they need to be true. yeah we're gonna make a statue of bender you can do that in the game you know That's you just what draw out will do. Of they'll, they'll build yeah. a statue uh commemorating bender um and then for anyone listening if they're like unsure of like this um or want to like see some more examples and stuff like that photos of actual play stuff and different like uh like preview material that's up on our blog so you can go to defydanger.com and that'll take okay. you right there Excellent. Okay, so defydanger.com, uh, and then yeah. uh, Avarice up on Drive Through RPG. Uh, so uh, that that's great. Um, Alex, are you excited to get your dwarf on? I am excited to get my dwarves angry and mad and wrecking up the place. So that's a yes. Yes. Basically, Excellent. that's. I need to. I need to find some people to play this with. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> you you get yourself a, a you know a tower. And uh, and then you get get yourself some dice, and you're all set. That doesn't solve the people problem I have, Nathan. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, we've been actually considering about how we could do this online, and so there's a lot oh. of shared uh, white space drawing kind of stuff, uh, mm. just like free uh, websites and apps or whatever that that are out there. Um, so Discord just agree to how many Jenga tower pulls are going to be beforehand. We recommend uh, 21 or 24 is kind of like a good r number to use with. Oh, um, but that you say okay after that many polls, it's over. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, you can do it online. Oh, hey. Yeah. Uh, you should. Uh, you should. Uh, print up a a fact sheet for uh playing online with it. Maybe. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. That yeah. Way you can be like, here, you have this. Now you can play it online with your friends too. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, you yeah. can live stream it. We can. We can do a. a, a we can do live it on, stream the, of that on the maybe. Discord. I'd love to do that. Yeah, yeah, that would that would be fun. I can just imagine Paul. <laughs> I was just playing. Like, yeah. <laughs> I can just imagine drunk Paul playing Avarice. <laughs> oh, usually we hear him playing Dark Souls. Yeah, nope. well, you know, this he'll probably we're... he'll probably still be playing Dark Souls, <laughs> or actually, I think he's on to Sekiro. He'll probably be playing Dar uh, Sekiro half drunk, playing Avarice, and it will be the most dwarven thing that you will ever hear. <laughs> you are correct <laughs> yep hey there's something to look forward to folks anyway i want to thank c Stephen ross for being on the show thanks for coming back thanks for having me guys always was a pleasure yeah 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 and so uh we already know uh the, the website and uh where they can get the game uh if they wanted to follow what you're doing online uh in any other capacity on like social or anything like that where could they yeah. find you at DDE Adventures on Twitter. And that's probably the primary way that we have, uh, you know, our, 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 our game making kind of communication. Excellent. Well, I should have probably have also mentioned Alex, if they want to find out everything else Delve related, where could they go? 
You can find us on DellCast.com. Yep, and we have everything that we do over there, not just this show, but everything else. All the other things Nathan does. All the other things Nathan does, basically. And and and, and the, soon uh, what Dom does. And soon what Dom does, yes, yes. The, people got a little bit of taste of that uh, on, on one of our Spotlight episodes, so uh, get ready for, for more than that, because uh, he is working on some other stuff. He's working out the kinks of the recording process. There you go. While you were there, make sure to check out our Patreon, uh, and thank you to our shiny level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Dominic Perry we just mentioned a second ago. If you want to find uh, us on the Twitter, I am at Citanium. You can find me at EXP Limited, and the show is at Dell Podcast. Follow us along over there, and uh, you can also find the show on all kinds of podcast apps, including iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. So wherever you get it, just go there. We're there. Stars. I like those. Reviews. Also good. That's my new pitch. Yeah, try it. That's your th- it's uh, cool. Not unsubscribe and dislike. <laughs> dislike and unsubscribe is mostly for my videos. <laughs> That's what I say. Um, I'm trying to keep that aesthetic going <laughs> for my videos. Good. It makes people laugh. Maybe they'll actually do the opposite. You know what's am- <laughs> well? You know what is amazing? The video that I did where I was like dislike and unsubscribe. We gained subscribers, and it it I has no dislikes. <laughs> so there's that but my thinking is that like reverse psychology yeah Yeah. exactly it's reverse psychology but mostly my my thought process is like okay well if we do if people do unsubscribe or dislike it's not because they don't like the video they were just following instructions so i'm perfectly fine either way (laughs) i don't mind uh again i just want to thank c stephen ross for coming on the show thank you yeah thank you yeah and uh get ready uh, to uh, watch dwarves fail horribly in avarice. <laughs> Strike the earth! Strike the earth. <laughs> Make the tower fall. And uh, so for all of us here from Delft, uh, thank you for joining us, and we will see you on the next episode. Goodbye. Bye. What, whoa, whoa, wait. The full moon tonight? Is, yes. Is, is Alex the were giraffe? Are we dealing with this right now? We cannot confirm or deny these allegations. He went moment. to the Sahara recently, and I cannot confirm back, or deny these allegations. And he was acting a little strange, <laughs> but I have noticed his neck is a little longer than it used to be. So we That's never... why I wear the cape. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> <laughs>